So when Temba was out working, Camila and Adisa would be together. They were deeply in love. In a village named Malindi, people gathered outside the king's house. They watched something they thought was crazy. Princess Chioma, the king's daughter, was giving up being a princess to marry Adisa. She left her father's big house, said goodbye to her sad parents and her maids, and walked to Adisa, who was waiting for her. Adisa, really? A blacksmith? One person asked. He has nothing to give our princess, another said. But Adisa and Chioma didn't care about what people said. They loved each other, and that was enough. That night, as Chioma tried to get used to her new small house, Adisa saw she wasn't comfortable. He promised her with tears in his eyes, I will make you proud, don't worry. She smiled at him, took out a bag from her things, and gave it to Adisa. He opened it and found many diamonds inside. Where did these diamonds come from? He asked, surprised. Chioma laughed and said, You didn't think I would leave without anything, did you? Let's sell these diamonds and put the money in your work, she said. Adisa looked at Chioma with love. No one had been so kind to him since he lost his parents. He hugged her and cried, happy that they had a way to live well together. Three years flew by and Adisa's investment flourished. He became the top blacksmith in his village and his fame reached nearby villages too. Kings and mighty fighters used the weapons he crafted. But as he got richer, he started seeing other women, which hurt his marriage a lot. Chioma did her best to make their home happy, but nothing worked. She was also sad because she couldn't have a baby. Adisa didn't want to be with her anymore because he thought it was useless. Chioma was upset. Her life wasn't going the way she wanted. Adisa broke all his promises and she missed being a princess every day. But there was no going back. The village rule said that because she didn't marry another royal, she couldn't be part of her royal family anymore. They couldn't help her with her marriage problems either. She cried a lot when she thought about what her mother had told her. Please think hard about this. I don't think this man really cares about you, her mother had said. Now Chioma realized that Adisa might not have really loved her. She felt tricked by his kindness. That's why she left everything she knew for him. Maybe he knew her parents would give her a big gift when she left. Or maybe he thought marrying a princess was the best he could do. But his reasons didn't matter anymore. It was too late. Adisa had let her down and he had ruined the love they were supposed to have. The people in the village didn't respect her either because she was always caught fighting with the many women Adisa was with. One day, Chioma went to the market to get some fruits. At the first stall, she checked a fruit but didn't like it. She moved on to another stall. The first seller got mad and yelled, Silly woman, don't touch if you're not buying. You must bug your husband too. That's why he's with other women. Chioma was stunned. Was it really this bad? She couldn't even shop in peace. She left the market in tears without the fruit she came for. That night, Adisa returned to find Kiyoma crying on the floor. I'm so sad, she told him. I know you don't want me, but please, let's try for a child. I can't stand feeling lonely. Adisa was annoyed. Why bother? It won't change anything, he said. But Chioma wouldn't stop crying. She hadn't been close to her husband in months. At last, he agreed. Three months passed, and Chioma was thrilled to learn she was pregnant. Adisa was overjoyed too. He started making big promises again. I'll honor you for this miracle. My love is yours forever, he told her. Chioma felt proud. She just wanted her husband's love, and the baby seemed to make everything right, just like Adisa said. He took care of her like when they first met. It seemed everything was perfect. But was it really? During her seventh month of being pregnant, Chioma set out for her usual visit to the herbalist in the neighboring village. 
Upon arrival, she learned he had left due to an urgent matter. Feeling let down, she headed back home. Nearing her house, she was puzzled by the sound of a woman's laughter. She entered and walked towards her bedroom, following the laughter. Opening the bedroom door, she was shocked to see her husband with another woman. Chioma, weren't you at the herbalists? Her husband, Adisa, exclaimed, surprised. The other woman, unapologetic, got up from the bed. In a rage, Chioma tried to confront her, but was overpowered, and fell Chioma to the floor, crying out for her unborn child, My baby! My baby! The fall triggered her labor, and she needed to deliver the baby prematurely. Adisa hurried to fetch the midwives, who rushed to assist with the birth. An hour passed, and Chioma gave birth to a healthy baby boy. One midwife went to inform Adisa about his wife and newborn. However, upon their return, they found Kioma without any signs of life. The second midwife attempted revival, but it was futile. Chioma, overcome by weakness and heartache, had given up the fight for life. Adisa was heartbroken after his wife died. He couldn't understand why it happened, but he knew he was to blame. He believed his bad actions led to Chioma's death, the woman who gave up so much to be with him. He promised himself he'd never be with another woman again. Instead, he decided to focus on his son and his work. I'll remember you forever, he would say to himself. Even after 20 years, he kept his promise. He avoided the village women and just took care of his business. Adisa looked after his son, Temba, who was now around 25 years old. One day, Temba came to him and said, Papa! I found the woman I love. I want to marry her. Adisa was very happy to hear this. He thanked God for this good news. Right away, he told Temba he would help him. He promised to give Temba a house, some animals, and his business as a gift. When can I meet her? I want to see my future daughter-in-law, he asked, excited to meet her. Temba told his dad, she'll come later this week. They picked a day for the meeting. When that day came, Temba brought Camila to meet his dad. The moment Adisa saw her, his heart felt warm. He was amazed by her. Hello, Papa, said Camila. Her voice made Adisa's heart jump. He thought, she's like a goddess. But then he remembered she was going to marry Temba. They all talked nicely, and Adisa kept looking at Camila, admiring her. That night, Adisa couldn't sleep. He kept thinking about Camila. The next few weeks were busy with wedding plans for Temba and Camila. Adisa's feelings for Camila grew stronger every time he saw her. She seemed more beautiful each day. On the wedding day, Camila wore traditional clothes and beads. She looked so beautiful dancing that Adisa couldn't stop watching her. He fell deeply in love with her and wanted to be with her no matter what. After the wedding, Adisa told Temba and Camila they should stay with him. Your house isn't ready, he said. They agreed, but weeks went by and there was no news about the house. Adisa would ask Temba about it when they were alone, saying he wanted to add more to it. But in front of Camila, Adisa would make fun of Temba, saying he couldn't do anything without his dad. He made Temba feel small, saying things like, If I die, Temba will be lost. He can't even get a house for his wife without me. This made Camila start to think her husband wasn't capable. Camila and Adisa began to spend a lot of time together. She started to see Adisa as the man she really needed. She found reasons to be near him, and Adisa felt he had won her over. One day he told her how he felt, and she felt the same way. I want you to be mine, not just for a night or a few hours, but to marry you he said to Camila. She was confused because she was already married to Temba. Adisa had a plan, but he wasn't ready to tell her yet. He wanted to make sure she really trusted him. So when Temba was out working, Camila and Adisa would be together. They were deeply in love. Camila told Adisa she was fed up with faking her love for Temba. She wished he would vanish. Adisa grinned knowing it was time to share his dark plan. 
I can make him vanish, he said, locking eyes with her. Camila understood and smiled, agreeing to the plan without many words. One day, Adisa called Temba aside. Son, the lovely house for you and Camila is ready, but I need a favor first, he said. He asked Temba to take weapons to a war zone between two villages. Temba was scared. Papa, that's too risky. I might not come back, he said. But Adisa convinced him that it would be safe, as someone would meet him before the battlefield to take the weapons. Temba wasn't sure, but when he spoke to Camila, she encouraged him. You should go. Show your father your strong and reliable man, she urged. Her words swayed Temba. Early the next morning, Temba left with the weapons, heading towards what he thought would be his end. But fate had other plans. The assassin, hiding near the battlefield, recognized Temba. He remembered how Temba had saved him from drowning a year ago. Now he had to choose, complete his mission or save Temba's life. He decided to do the right thing and stepped out to talk to Temba. Are you the one waiting for these weapons? Temba asked him. The assassin Chizoba was shocked. Adisa hadn't told him that his target was his own son. Temba looked at Chizoba and finally remembered him. Chizoba, I hope you've learned to swim, he said. Chizoba smiled weakly and asked Temba to sit down. He then told Temba about the plot against him. Temba cried, unable to believe his father's betrayal. How could a father want to harm his own son? He sobbed. Chizoba felt sorry for Temba and offered him some money to escape. Temba cried again, thinking of Camila. I need to take her with me, he said. Chizoba hesitated, then revealed that Adisa had introduced Camila to him as his wife. Temba was shocked. He had always believed his father and wife were just close friends. Now his heart ached. The assassin, who had become his savior, took him home. The next day, he helped Temba escape to a distant village to begin anew. He gave Temba a house, land and gold. Thank you, Temba said crying. The man replied, you saved my life, I'm just paying you back. You'll always have a friend in me. Then he left. Meanwhile, in Malindi village, Adisa and Camila celebrated, thinking Temba was gone. They received a false message from the assassin that the mission has been completed. Not long after, Adisa told Camila's parents he'd marry her. They agreed, impressed by his wealth. After their secret wedding, Camila got pregnant and had a boy. Tragically, the child soon fell sick and died. Adisa held Camila saying, Don't worry, we'll have more children. Despite their wealth and plans, they faced this sad loss together not knowing Temba was still alive and starting over far away. Camila became pregnant again, and she gave birth to a baby. Sadly, this child also passed away. Adisa encouraged her, let's try once more for an heir. They were hopeful, and soon Camila was pregnant. This baby survived longer, and they celebrated its naming. But heartbreakingly, the baby died a week later after the naming ceremony celebration. Adisa and Camila were in despair, wondering why this was happening. Camila's mother suggested seeing the new medical missionaries in the village. The next day, they went to the missionaries, who asked many questions and ran tests. The results showed that both Adisa and Camila had the sickle cell gene. That's why their babies kept dying so young. The missionaries explained they could still have healthy children, but there was always a chance of having more sick babies. Adisa was filled with deep sadness. He realized his big mistake. He had lost his son for a future that now seemed empty. The love he thought he had for Camila quickly turned sour. When they returned home, Adisa told her to leave. Go back to your parents' house. I need to be alone to make up for my bad actions, he said. From then on, Adisa spent his days by himself, full of regret. He missed his son's voice. His last days were full of bad dreams, and people said they could hear him crying out for his life to end as they walked by his house. When he died, he was all alone. The people from the village took everything valuable from his house. 
his home became a place for thieves to hide. So viewers, the lesson of the story is clear in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. In the hadith Sahih al-Bukhari, where Allah's messenger said, He who does not show mercy to people, Allah will not show mercy to him. Adisa did wrong to his son, and as a result, he faced punishment in the form of the deaths of his three sons and profound loneliness. Thank you for listening to this story. Now I'd like to hear from you in the comments about what you've learned. If you like this story, please share it with your friends and family. Until next time, goodbye.